Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, was it a prank, a collective nightmare, or could it have been something much more evil? This is Real Ghost Stories Online. If you have a real ghost story, share it with us, because you might have one if you're listening to the show. Call in at 855-853-4802, write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. And if you want to be a premium subscriber, that's super easy. You can sign up through Apple Podcasts where you can try it for three days free. You can sign up through patreon.com slash real ghost stories or go to ghostpodcast.com. And with that, no commercials, advanced episodes, and access to the archive. I'm Carol Hughes and Kathy Gordon. How's it going today? Well, it's been a day. Has it? It has been. It has been a day. I um, submitted my letter of retirement um, from my job, and um, I guess I'm just not going to do that. And who knows what I'm going to do? Well, and here's the thing. So Kathy has been teaching for how many years now? Oh, well, 35. 35 years. And very good at it. I have sat in oh, on— Oh, you. You are very, you, you are you, very good nice. at it. Very, very good at her job. And it's like, I think it just is— a tough job that after a point just kind of wears you down, you know? Well, yeah. And you know, I mean, it, teaching is, uh, it's a great job. I l- have loved being, I'm lucky I've gotten to teach things I get to teach. I, you know, I teach art and I get to teach art history and I get to show people beautiful art and talk about, you know, beautiful places in the world and all these wonderful things and teach them how to draw and show them painting things and, you know, doing all this stuff, right? Um, but it, you are the entertainer in the room all day long. All day, every day. You're on. Yeah. You're always on. You, you're always on. And so it, it, you know, I think it, I think I've loved doing it, but I think it's time for me to do some other things. I think I want to do some more podcasting stuff and maybe some more, uh, definitely do a lot more of my own art stuff. And, um, you know, I got some different ideas. So I'm excited for you. I think it's a great opportunity. So we'll see how it goes. There's something fun around the corner for you. And I may, and who knows, I may end up starving, you know, like uh, homeless in a van down by the river. I don't know. Who knows? Hey, I got an extra room. You'll never be homeless down by the river because I got a room. Oh, that's good. Okay. Okay. That's perfect. You can always move in with me and the kids. Oh, perfect. So just just know that. But we'll have to rent you a a storage facility because I got no room in this house. Yeah, and I have a lot of art supplies. Yeah. And in the 1940s house, because this was built in 1940, they had no things in the 40s. No. Like, where did they put their Christmas decorations? I guess they didn't have any. I guess they were all homemade. It was like popcorn and shit like that strung around the tree, and then they just <laughs> gave it to the birds until next year. I don't know, but where did they put things? Yeah, where did they put stuff? <laughs> That's absolutely right. So just know that. We'll rent you a storage facility and you can live here. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So we've got a couple stories today. And the first one says, I am in the sign. And you know what? Before I say that, congratulations. You have had a great career and I'm really happy for you. And I know that was a difficult thing to do because it's always hard. It's hard to say goodbye. You know, it is tough. Well, you know, I mean, I still have a, a few weeks before it it starts but you know once it once the it got out and everybody knew once it went to the board then all all the all afternoon people have been in my office yeah. talking to me about it so it's hard i'm not good at goodbyes i'm not good at even if i've been at a job oh. for like 6 months i'm like oh my god i got to go that's the worst <laughs> like so they said you, they they said we need to know do you want a party Oh, hell oh, no. No, like absolutely not. That that is my idea of an of like hell. Yeah. Is being at a party for me. Oh my god, I would hate that. I love going to parties for other people and celebrate other people. I just have a hard time with myself. It's like, oh, this is so embarrassing, you know. Well, and it's not even that. It's that look everybody gives you like, oh my god, I'm going to miss you so much. And then it's oh, like, oh, just, quit looking yeah. at me like that. I just hate. I, it. I, I just cry. hate everything about it. I would start like, crying. Like I love you guys, but let's don't do that. Yeah. No. 
you know. So anyway, so back to the story that I interrupted okay, myself with. I'm going to start over. It says, I am in the scientific field and I am the odd one out in my circles. When it comes to the unexplained, but the stories you collect and share and discuss have become my primary source material for the paranormal. So thanks for what you do. Honestly, I'm pretty slow to believe anything until analyzing and investigating and then analyzing the evidence again. I think that's good. I think that's good. I think everybody yeah. should kind of be like that. Absolutely. Most paranormal events, I believe, have logical explanations whether or not we're aware of the logic by which to arrive at those explanations yet. Agreed. That said... I have witnessed a handful of such events. And listening to an older episode recently, I decided to finally write in and share one of these events because you were talking about churches. You mentioned that churches can have a tendency to hold larger amounts of energy, be it anywhere on the very dark and unholy to the very comforting and light scale. I absolutely agree, as they are places where people are often not emotionally charged and responsive, but are likely voluntarily opening themselves up spiritually. So all of that to say, I agree with you. I have encountered several churches that have that feeling of housing more than meets the eye, but this church in particular held more than just a feeling, in quotes. Kathy and I have been to several places. We like to travel and when we go, we like to go to really old churches. <laughs> oh, we go to every church. Yeah. Every church we can so get into. So we've been all over from great churches in Europe. We saw some great ones in Canada. Mm -hmm. When we vacationed up there, we've been to some, you know, in cities like New York or Chicago. Oh, yeah. And, all over Philadelphia. And wherever. There are, we'll go we've to been in a few that it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, the one that we were talking about, St. Stanislaus mm -hmm. recently, um, that was a church. Built yep. in what, 16 something? Well, the original yeah, church it, was like yeah, 1200. No, it, it, yeah, because I think the original area where Stanislav was buried was earlier. And then the the other church they added on to was in the Baroque, you know, in the 1600s. Bernini did it. Yeah, so I totally agree with this. So it goes on. It says, this story occurred over 10 years ago when I was almost 19 years old when I still associated with a church on the regular, I don't now, I was on a mission trip from Kansas to Los Angeles with my youth group. We were there doing things like sorting food for food pantries and hanging out with at-risk youth. While in town, we were staying in a multi, I guess that's what, because what it says, while we were in town, we were staying in a multi-building, ED, building the building the church. Building church, yeah. Yeah, it's, I can't quite say mm -hmm. that right. We were with a highly conservative youth group, so all males had to sleep in the Sunday school buildings, and the females slept in the fellowship hall, which was a large, mostly empty room used for lunches and meetings and smaller services. There were about 10 to 15 of us girls in the room, all spread out in sleeping bags and on air mattresses. There were also a couple adult chaperones in the room with us. Our first night there... After stalling lights out for as long as we could, the lights were turned off and our laughter tapered off to talking and the talking tapered off to whispering. And finally, we all settled to sleep. That was so well written because I can <laughs> feel that because that's how that would happen when you were, you know, at a camp mm -hmm. or something, the way it kind of tapers off to getting quieter yeah, and quieter. That's exactly it. Several hours later, my shallow sleep was interrupted when we were all woken by a rapid, terror-filled scream piercing the dead silence of the large room of sleeping girls. The shrieking lasted a long time, and it was loud and clear, and the source was very obviously among us, not outside or in an adjoining room. I'd guess it was about a full minute long of rapid screams slash shrieks that were thick and loud and basically animalistic. Though it could have been shorter, I just knew it was long enough for all of us to sit up in various stages of sleep slash terror slash confusion. I sat bolt upright, immediately awake enough to register these screams, which were guttural, 
hardly human sounding. At least I hope I never hear a human make a sound so haunting and utterly terrible. And I sensed a heavy darkness and couldn't make out anyone or anything in the apparent fog. The room was pitch dark, the sort of dark that exists as a presence rather than an absence of light. Eventually, the shrieking stopped and one of the mom chaperones turned on a flashlight and turned some lights on. It felt like a solid five minutes of waiting through that terror, but I'd guessed the duration was, like I said, a minute, maybe two. We all checked with those closest to us to make sure our closest friends were not the source because the volume was so strong, and none were. The moms checked on us all sleepily, and those of us who had woken enough to actually register the tenacity of the shrieking in the presence of the darkness were shaken. We discussed it briefly before being told sternly to get back to sleep, and we were all in the darkness again. If I were hearing this story secondhand, like the very few I've shared it with, I'd immediately dismiss it as a prank or some girl having a nightmare. I wanted to, actually, and tried, but I think that for me, the paranormal can be sorted from the normal with the presence or absence of a gut feeling. And this incident came with a hell of a dark gut feeling. There was a sense of unease in that room for the rest of our stay there. That feeling compounded by our absolute inability to locate the source of the screams, despite asking around for several days, leaves me fairly comfortable categorizing this one as straight-up paranormal, especially since so many others could corroborate the story. And as for the others, some girls who were there wrote it off as they were too tired or confounded to really acknowledge the sounds. Others said they woke up and assumed everyone was standing up because through the dark, they could see several shadowy people standing. I didn't see the shadowy people, though I did see the thick, opaque darkness. Most girls just shrugged it off. A few of us, though, maybe the more sensitive, who really experienced the weight of the shrieking, were fairly sure that this was not one of the events easily explained by natural science. The name of the church was Whittier College Avenue Church of the Nazarene, and despite my best research efforts, I can't find anything to explain this occurrence. The church is, though, less than four miles from Turnbull Canyon, a place in the area with an incredibly dark history and surrounded by even darker legends dating back to the Native Americans involving everything from the occult to child snatchers. At the very least, I know some churches tend to get a little feisty with their prayers and calling out demons. Maybe this was one of them? The supernatural re- residue of a sloppy... <laughs> i got to start that again. The sentence just made me laugh. The supernatural residue of a sloppy exorcism? Who knows? Hmm. I just know it was unlikely a pleasant or helpful presence. P.S. My husband is from Hutchinson and says you should absolutely check out the library there, especially the basement. <laughs> that is from Jory. Okay. I, I, you live, know, I live 80 miles or 60 miles from Hutchinson. I could check that out. The one ghost I ever saw was in the basement of a library. And I think probably Hutch has one of those old Carnegie libraries. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll bet you're right. Do you think that all that screaming and stuff? Okay, well, there's been? several things to pick apart here. Um, One is apparently it sounded like they stayed more than one night, and it didn't happen again. N- right? Now, she did say they felt a very heavy darkness presence energy, but I think it was after that night that she felt that. But I would, too, mm-hmm. simply because I had a really terrifying experience happen. So I, even if there wasn't a dark presence or energy about it, I would feel that because I would be afraid that it's going to happen again. Now, there are animals that make crazy noises. But it sounds like it was right? in that room, so the animal would have had to get in and get out with no one noticing it. Mm-hmm. You know, it it just seems to me like 
I've, I've got to go paranormal with this because there's just too many people involved. Well, and some of them saw shadow people. And heard it. Like, just too many people saw it, heard it. Moms, not just, you know, easily frightened teenage girls or something. Like, you know, a lot of people like to say, you know, it's just, oh, you know, it's just kids, you know, kids. Well, there were moms in there. Moms grabbing flashlights and looking around. But moms doing what they probably would do on some sort of religious mission, going, it's that was nothing, nothing. go back, go to, back sleep. to sleep. Mm-hmm. Because how do you explain that? You don't. Well, you can't you explain don't. it. Yeah. You don't. And I can't, you know, I, I just don't see any way that the boys could do a prank and make it happen in the room without being seen. You know, well, and there's moms in that room, so you would play the prank on the girls when it's just the girls in the room, but you got moms in the room. You yeah. don't play a prank when moms are in the room. Yeah, no, no, I think I think something was there. Uh, and you she know? did say it was, and I do think you're right. I think churches have a lot of there's a lot of emotion that goes in churches, and people open themselves up in a church. Exactly. To you know. To, to the spiritual world. And so, I yeah, I think I think it's definitely possible. I just, there's just too many witnesses in this one. Yeah. And Jory is a great writer. That oh, was gosh, really yeah. well written. Very great. Yeah. So we're Excellent. paranormal all the way with you on this one. Don't know mm-hmm. what it was. Can't tell you that. But I believe whatever it was, was not... A person. I'm, I'm just a little surprised it didn't happen again while they were there. Now, I could almost see it happening like someone, someone having night terrors and one of the girls screaming. Mm-hmm. The, that's mm-hmm. the only thing I could see that it could have been. But it seems like if I'm sleeping next to Kathy and Kathy's screaming, I know it's Kathy screaming. Right. It's like you scared the shit out of me, Kathy. But I know where it's coming from. Just because mm-hmm. Lynn did that once on one of our vacations. Mm-hmm. Night tears and screaming in the middle of the night. But you uh, knew it was them. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so here's our next story. It says, hey, I'm a new listener, stumbled across your podcast, and I love it. I have a story for you guys. I met my boyfriend in San Francisco, and due to the city being so expensive, we decided to move to Tucson and stay with my boyfriend's family. My boyfriend told me stories about when he was a kid, he would see a little girl walk into his closet on several occasions, and other times he would wake up standing in the kitchen facing the corner. That's creepy to wake up and you're like standing in the corner. I always laughed it off because being in the house, I never felt anything around me until I was in the house alone. There are six of us in the house, so it's rare that I'm ever alone here. But the first time I was alone... I couldn't shake the feeling I was being watched. I was sitting at the desk in our room, which is opposite the door, and the door was open since I was home alone. I was listening to music or whatever I was doing on my computer, and I felt a draft on my neck. And I turned to face the door, and I saw what appeared to be a man holding a beer bottle, ducking into the living room at the end of the hallway. Thinking it was either my boyfriend or one of his sisters, (laughs) he must he must have some butch-looking sisters. <laughs> it's like, I see a man. Oh. Could that be one of my boyfriend's sisters? Well, you know, you you just make up every possible... <laughs> That's true. It's like... You know, in the moment you go, well, I don't think he's her, you know? It didn't really look like her, but maybe... like a know? dude, but I don't know. I am not here to judge. Um, I called out, and after a few seconds, I got no reply, and I got up and walked into the living room, and no one was in the room. I checked the bedrooms and the locks on all of the doors. I was definitely alone. I started getting really creeped out at this point, so I decided to turn on the TV in the living room just to have some noise on in the house so it wasn't so quiet. I went back to the bedroom. I got back on the computer and texted my boyfriend to tell him what I thought I saw. He told me he used to see the same thing when he was younger and that his mom's first husband had died in the house before his mom married his dad 
and that he had drank himself to death. At this point, I was really freaked out, and I decided to go to the kitchen and make some food to take my mind off of it. While in the kitchen, I noticed the house got quiet again. I peeked my head around the corner, and the TV in the living room was off. I walked over and tried to turn the TV back on, but the remote wasn't working, and then I heard what sounded like a little girl, muffled laughing, coming from the bedroom. I called my boyfriend, and I asked him how long it was going to be before he was going to be home, and he said he was on the way, so I sat in the kitchen until he got home. Once he was home, the noise and stuff stopped. I make it a point to not be in the house alone now. There are occasions where I am, and every time I hear weird stuff around the house, I don't think his mom's first husband likes me very much. Thanks for taking the time to read this. I'm not the best at writing things, so I hope it reads okay. I love the show. Keep up the great episodes, Jay. That is interesting to me. Because well, I found it really fascinating that when they first saw the the man, right, come out, they said what 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 I thought was interesting, holding a beer bottle. That struck me as weird when you said it. I'm like, out of all the stories we've listened to, I'm never I don't ever remember somebody like rarely does a spirit hold something let alone so recognizable that it's in their hand. Like, cause it must've been kind of a quick because vision because they said, is it my boyfriend? Is it one of the sisters? Is it? And yet they knew it was a beer bottle, you know, exactly. not a, I don't know, not something else, not some other type of bottle, you know, not a jar of mayonnaise, a beer bottle. And I, I, I think that to me is oddly so specific. Well, and it would be, too, because if you saw somebody, you that's just very recognizable. When you see somebody walking in the house But yeah, you weren't cup, sure you would, that enough that it was a man or maybe a sister, but, but you knew the beer bottle. I thought that was interesting, that for some reason, that was a really prominent thing that stuck out in their mind, Right. Even though, uh, obviously, it happened fast, it happened quick, they said, you know, they saw that. And so then to have, to find out later this story about the first husband dying from drinking, I think that's really interesting. Now, I have no idea who this little girl is. No. That's interesting. I don't either, but, but early in the story, they, the boyfriend mentioned that he had seen this little girl. Mm -hmm. And then... Early, Jay mm -hmm. heard the little girl. Mm -hmm. That's laughing. Interesting. Oh, so, anytime you have you know spirits laughing, that's so creepy. So very creepy. So creepy. Well, here's one more oh. quick one. This is a phone call. It's pretty quick. Okay. Hello, my name is Landis, and I live in Tennessee. And this happened a few years ago. And this is going to be a pretty short story. My daughter was about two at the time, and we lived in a little bungalow house, which basically just had four rooms, a little tiny kitchen, and uh, a full basement downstairs, and that's where the laundry was. And we had a wood stove, and instead of using the dryer to dry the clothes, I would hang them up downstairs so they could air dry and hopefully safe. But I just put my daughter down for a nap. It took a while because she had refused to go to sleep. So... I was downstairs doing laundry, and I saw a little girl come down the stairs, her footsteps. And so I went to the foot of the stairs and said, Emma, my daughter's name, I said, Emma, why are you out of bed? This is your nap time. You're not going to get the dessert that I promised you if you didn't go to sleep. Well, there was nobody there. And I uh, crept up the stairs and, and went to her room and looked up there, and she was just sound asleep. So that kind of didn't really freak me out. I didn't feel any kind of hostility toward that or any kind of weird uh, feelings like animosity. But I just sort of thought, well, that was strange. It just kind of went on about my my way, and I never felt anything after that. But Emma one time was playing in a room, and I heard her talking. And, and I said, Emma, 
are you talking to your baby doll, a little new baby doll I got her? And she said, no, I'm talking to the little girl sitting in front of me, and she looks just like me. And I just said, okay. I said, well, just play nice. I know that was a pretty short story, but I hope you all can use it. And I enjoy the podcast very, very much. I listen to it on the way to work and on the way home. Thank you all for uh, for having one of these. Thank you. Bye. That's so interesting that the little girl looked just like her little girl. Yeah. Creepy. Oh my gosh. You know, that is that that is a really startling feeling when you and once again saw saw it saw this little girl well enough that she thought it was her daughter. Yeah. You know. And then her daughter says she looks just like me. Mm-hmm. Is playing with her. But it, what I think is really I, interesting is that when she saw the little girl, it didn't really phase her. And, you know, her girl upset asleep. her. She was just like, mm, didn't feel yeah. anything weird. No, it, it didn't seem to upset her any. You know, but I... Yeah, boy, I tell you, it does it does seem like there's uh, there was something there, and I liked the way she handled it though. Where she said, "Okay, we'll just be nice." Yeah, you know, she once again didn't try to tell her, "No, there's nobody there." Or, you know, that's silly or whatever. She, you know, she just she said, "Okay," you know, that's fine, and and I like that kind of attitude, letting you know. And not you know, trying to be like, honey, there's nobody there. Just going with it. Yeah. And especially after you've seen her. Mm-hmm. You know? Interesting. So creepy, yet not creepy at the yet, same time. Yet it didn't seem to bother them either, necessarily. So, you know. Yeah, when you think of it just as the story, like if I was to say, yeah, and then this woman, you know, she saw the kid walking down the that's creepy, but the way she told it was so matter of fact, and it didn't seem to bother her, and it didn't seem to bother the daughter. And if they're okay with it, you know what? Damn it, I'm okay with it too. That's right. I'm I not, am too. I'm not going to freak out for them. I'm going to be good. For, good for you for some good yep. parenting there. I think so too. I think he handled it just right. Well, if you have a ghost story, we would sure love to hear it. If you want to call it in, it's 855-853-4802. Write them in at realghoststoriesonline.com. If you want to be a premium subscriber, you could do that. You get advanced episodes, access to the archive, no commercials. You can sign up through Apple Podcasts where you can try it for three days free. Also sign up through patreon.com slash realghoststories or go to ghostpodcast.com. And for all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, thank you for listening.